Hey everyone, I'm Jason, and this is your commentary on Exodus chapter 24. The Lord said to Moses, You and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel must come up to me. Do not come close when you worship. Only Moses can come close to me. The others must not come near, and the people may not go up with him. Now Moses is going up with Aaron, who is his brother and the high priest, as well as Nadab and Abihu, who were the two sons of Aaron. Moses went and told the people all of the Lord's words and laws. They answered with one voice. They said, We will do everything the Lord has told us to do. Then Moses wrote down everything the Lord had said. Now, back in those times, in order for something to be legally binding, it actually had to have two witnesses. The first one would be an agreement between the two parties. This could be verbal, written on papyrus, or a small stone. Any of those would work. Once it was written down, the two parties would then agree to everything that was written down, everything that was set. And the second edition of it, the final one, would be the actual agreement between the two people. So here, Moses says it verbally and then writes it down as the first form of agreement between God and the people. Moses got up early the next morning. He built an altar at the foot of the mountain. He set up twelve stone pillars. They stood for the twelve tribes of Israel. Then he sent young Israelite men to offer burnt offerings. They also sacrificed young bulls as friendship offerings to the Lord. Moses took half of the blood and put it in the bowls. He sprinkled the other half on the altar. Now, for their sacrifices, blood was often used. It was life was in the blood. And so if you wanted something that was binding, something that you would put your life in or a replacement of someone else's life, you would use blood in order to secure that promise, that covenant that was being made in the sacrifice. By putting the blood on the altar, it was God's way of saying that it is blood bound, his promise to the Israelites. Then he took the scroll of the covenant and read it to the people. They answered, We will do everything the Lord has told us to do. We will obey him. Then Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people. He said, This is the blood that puts the covenant into effect. The Lord has made this covenant with you in keeping with all of these words. By putting the blood on the people, it was saying they too were bound by this covenant that they were going to obey. This is also a foreshadow of what we're going to find in the New Testament, when Jesus says that his blood is the blood of the covenant put into effect, and it's only when his blood covers the believers, figuratively of course, that we are then underneath that new covenant. Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and the seventy elders of Israel went up. They saw the God of Israel, Under his feet was something like a street made out of sapphire. It was as clear as the sky itself. But God didn't raise his hand against those leaders of the people of Israel. They saw God, and they ate and drank. Now, God is holy, and he's not even in a physical body, so you can't really see God. But to see his presence, to see his holiness, if you're not holy... It means that you would almost immediately die. And yet, God was able to spare them. God's done this a number of ways. He's allowed people to see him, not exactly in flesh, because God is spirit. But he allowed them to see him when he takes on the form of an angel, when he takes on the form of a human, of a pillar of fire, or a pillar of cloud, or a burning bush. It even says later on that Moses saw the back of God. So he's able to see his glory and still not die. It's odd that it says here that they saw God and they ate and they drank. Well, this could mean a couple of things. Earlier, we just heard about them making the friendship offering. And in the friendship offering, we would eat and drink. So maybe this means that the elders were able to go back and partake in the friendship offering. It could also mean that they were able to eat and drink just in the fact that they didn't die when they saw God. 
The third option is that it's figurative, that they ate and drank in more of a spiritual sense, that they were drinking in the moment. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain. Stay here. I will give you the stone tablets. They contain the law and commands I have written to teach the people. Then Moses and Joshua, his helper, started out. Moses went up on the mountain of God. He said to the elders, Wait for us here until we come back to you. Aaron and her are with you. Anyone who has a problem can go to them. Moses went up on the mountain. Then the cloud covered it. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai. The cloud covered the mountain for six days. On the seventh day, the Lord called out to Moses from inside the cloud. The people of Israel saw the glory of the Lord. It looked like a burning fire on top of the mountain. Moses entered the cloud as he went on up the mountain. He stayed on the mountain for forty days and forty nights. Now we've heard of forty days and forty nights. It's very common throughout scripture. It's a way of showing that God is testing or purifying his people. In this situation, God's not testing Moses. God's testing the Israelites. As was said earlier in chapter 20, verse 20, Moses said to the people, Don't be afraid. God has come to put you to the test. He wants you to have respect for him. That will keep you from sinning. Now, later on we'll learn whether the people pass the test or not. But right now, that's the end of Exodus chapter 24. So thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you guys next time.